Welcome to Ascension Lutheran Church and a special welcome to all the guests and the visitors and the people joining us just for the first time here, whether that's in person today or you're joining us online for the first time. We're glad and thankful that you're here with us. If you could go through a checklist of all of the signs that this is the end time of the world that God gave, that Jesus gave us in the Bible, you could run down that list right now and literally we could check off every single one. Awful things are happening. Yep, people are going to stop loving each other and start being selfish and all about themselves. Yep, wars are happening. Yep. Natural disasters are happening. Yep. Big diseases are coming through our world, right? Yep. Every single one, all of them absolutely checked off. It's true. We live right now in the end times. And that can feel kind of scary, right? But why are we here? Because God tells us and gives us confidence that even though we live in this awful and weird end time, our Savior Jesus changes what that means for us. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be anxious. He gives us every reason to let our hearts be at peace. So yes, the end is near, and that's going to be our service and sermon theme for this week and next week. But Jesus gives us confidence as we face those times. Everything that you need for worship is going to be printed out for you on the screens up in front. May God bless our worship this morning. Let's sing our opening song, God is for us.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for this service that's going to focus in a little bit more on the end and what the end looks like actually comes from the Old Testament long before the end times were happening from the book of Malachi. We get to hear that, yes, for those who oppose our God, he promises he's going to wipe them out and destroy them. But for us, for believers, what does the end time bring? Peace and healing. Surely, the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. This is the word of the Lord. I know this is new, and since this is my first Sunday, and thankfully uh, first Sunday for a couple other people here, this is going to be something we'll try for a little bit. We're going to do a children's message, but kids, you don't have to come up in front. You don't have to stand and sit up here and make it a little bit awkward. That way you can stay with your parents. And also for those of you that used to be smaller kids or who have kids, yeah, this message is for you guys too. Have you guys ever been in this situation? Yeah. I know at least for two of the little kids here, uh, just about a week and a half ago, they were in this situation for something like 15 hours, sitting in a car, looking out the window. Now what's the question that pops up as you sit in the car and look out the window and as you're waiting, what do you ask mom or dad or whoever's driving? What do you say to them? Are we there yet? That's right. And you want to know my really bad dad joke that I'll tell Nora every time she asks that to me, you know what I'll say to her? Yep, we're there. No matter how far we are, every single time, and you know what Nora says? No. And then she asks again, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? 
we all feel this, right? On these long car rides, or maybe even short car rides, when we've got this time that we have to wait, it feels like forever. And really, once you start getting on those longer car rides, it's not a fun waiting, is it? It starts to hurt sitting in that seat. You've seen the trees again and again and again. You've watched that SpongeBob episode too many times, and it's boring by now. Are we there yet? When is this going to be done? We can kind of feel that way as Christians too, right? This world that we live in is not perfect. We see it when we fight with other people. We see it when people hurt our feelings and aren't nice to us. We can ask that question now too. When are we going to be done with this? When is it going to be over? And here's the cool news. It's not like that long car ride and you know there's another one that's coming after it. No, because of our Savior Jesus, the end is coming and it's good. No more sad things, no more pain, no more long car rides, nothing bad. Listen in the sermon today. We're going to talk about how the end is coming and how Jesus makes that a good thing for us Christians. Let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've given us this time in your world, but we thank you more than anything that you help us know that the end is coming to be with us through all the sad and the bad things. And one day, Take us to be with you forever in heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. The second reading that we're going to look at, again on this Sunday as we focus on the end of all things, comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And uh, this is why for us as Christians, we don't have to worry about getting even with people. We don't have to look down on people and make people feel bad. No, for those who oppose God, he will come and he will make justice. So we don't have to do that. From 2 Thessalonians. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to those who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Just like when we do for someone important and special who comes into a room, we give them special attention and focus. That's what we do as we gather and we hear the words of the gospel that are focused on our Savior Jesus, our King who has come to save us too. Today that comes from Luke chapter 21. This will also serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. Some of his, Jesus' disciples, were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen and what will be the sign that they're about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs in, from heaven. But before all this, believers, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison and you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents, 
brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated for our hymn, our song of the day. It's, I will wait for you. It's a paraphrase of Psalm 130. It's a song of confidence that we can have even in this end time as the world is awful and there's awful things that are going on in our lives. This is the confidence we wait for our Lord God who is coming. Let's all join together and pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts who are here be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. So as I sat there on the massive concrete barrier, waiting for the rest of my family, but really waiting to watch Nora and her first reaction to seeing the Milwaukee Bucks basketball stadium on a game day, I noticed that there was a ton of stuff that was going on, a ton of things looking for my attention. Way over there on the left in the distance, there was this drum corps that was just banging on drums, and eventually we walked over and we watched them, and that was pretty cool. But where I was sitting, I was close to the, the drop-off lane for the cars, and the cars would zip up, and then all the doors would open, and 
uh, people that were a little bit slower from different things that they'd been doing before they started walking off into the distance into the stadium. As we got closer to game time, the crowds that were around started to get bigger and bigger, and tons of people were there. But out of all those people and out of everything that was going on, there were two people that stood out for me. They were two people that were standing on the other corner opposite me, and then there was one guy who was a little bit closer to me. And it was clear, they were not waiting like the rest of us to get inside for the game. All the crowds of people that were there intentionally were kind of walking far away from them so that they wouldn't have to look at them, so that they wouldn't have to interact with those people. And what was the attention-getting thing that they were doing? Well, these two guys, they had massive signs that they were holding up, very clear for everybody to hear and to see. And you know what was on their signs. It's our series theme for this week and next week. It's up on the screen. Up on their signs, it said, The end is near. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a situation like this has always made me feel at least a little bit uncomfortable. And I think it's because many of us, we don't really want to have to interact with people who are so in your face about something. That kind of feels like a scare tactic, right? It feels like maybe their only goal is to intimidate you to make you a little bit more afraid. And if that's someone's only goal, to make you intimidated and afraid so that you might actually have a conversation and listen to their words, it's not necessarily a thing that we want to lean into so much. So that might not be my personal strategy for sharing my faith with people for the first time. But what I can say is for people that choose that, is their strategy, that that's the way that they want to share their faith. I can say this, they're not wrong. The end is near. Again, to be fair, it is scary. There are tough and difficult things that are happening because the end is near. In fact, you heard it. Jesus tells us this. Jesus wanted his disciples and us to know what the end was going to look like. It was just a couple of days before Jesus would go to the cross. And he took this opportunity to tell his disciples and to tell us, get ready. Because this is what the end is going to look like. Some of his disciples were remarking about the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. How do you react to something like that when what they were looking at was this? I mean, the temple was a fortress. Part of it was built to be able to withhold an army coming and attacking. And you can see all of the stones. There are these massive stones that have been carved. Thousands of pounds, tons upon tons, stacked on top of each other. And even today, it would take some pretty heavy ammunition to knock this thing down. This is what they were looking at. And that's what Jesus said. What you see here. These things that look like they're going to last forever throughout all time going to be wiped out and leveled and the only thing that's going to be left is dust <laughs> now i'm sure his disciples good and freaked out from that first little bit of what jesus was saying they asked teacher when will these things take place and what will be the sign that they're about to happen and i think you can hear it in their questions they they were afraid they wanted to know little signs and hints and clues of what was coming so that maybe, just maybe, they could escape and watch out and not be part of these awful things. But Jesus said more for them. He replied, Watch out that you're not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming, I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, 
but the end will not come right away. Yes, believers, these things are coming. And there's more. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places. Fearful events and great signs from heaven. Not good stuff. And you can imagine, for these guys listening to Jesus, that their eyes just are getting bigger and bigger because Jesus wasn't even done yet. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues, to places of worship that should be safe places, and put you in prison. And you will brought, be brought before kings and governors, all on account of my name. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. I mean, doesn't it sound like Jesus is giving real reasons for his disciples and for us to be afraid of the awful things that are coming? They don't necessarily sound good. They sound pretty terrifying. Do you want to know something else that's pretty terrifying for me? It's uh, not the car, not Tesla in itself. What's terrifying for me is if I ever would get in one of these things and put it on autopilot and then take it onto the freeway. Oh. I mean, how many of you could do that and feel comfortable? Nobody? Good. A couple, Sam. Thank you. At least one person. You're bold. You're brave. Good for you, Sam. I couldn't do that, right? Imagine how it would feel knowing that this car is driving you as you get onto the freeway and it starts speeding up to 70 miles an hour and you start cruising. I know what I'd be doing. I'd be gripping onto the seat down there and the handle up there and you see the accident coming up and you feel that thing slam on the brakes. You're going to start thinking the end is near as you're sitting in this car, right? No. If I'm going to be in a dangerous situation, like a car on a freeway with big and bad stuff coming up, where do I want to be? I want to be sitting up front. I want to have two hands on the wheel. If bad and scary things are coming up, I want to be in the one who's in control, watching over what's going on in front of me. I wonder if Jesus' disciples were starting to feel a little bit like that as they listened to his words about the end. I wonder if they started making plans in their heads how they were going to deal with all of what was going on. But I think more than that, I, I think they were wondering if Jesus knows all of this, of what's coming up, if the one that we've watched work miracle after miracle knows all all of this, why would he let this happen? Why would he let us go through these awful things too? I think that they must have struggled listening to him because questioning God is something that is pretty easy to do, right? Just God, why are you allowing the war in Ukraine to keep going on month after month for people to die. And for what? God, why could you not have steered Hurricane Ian away from the Florida coast and saved billions of dollars of damage, hundreds of lives, and instead you let it hit? God, how can you let our country be a place of hate and hurt and divisiveness, even in our communities too? God, how can you let us go through all of the awful and wicked things in our world around us and then all of the awful and terrible personal experiences that you and I have had in our lives that, let's be honest, are probably too many to count. We question God. We wonder, if God is God, how could he let any of this happen? 
But I think if you want to question God, if you want to get personal with God and ask him about his plans and how he's doing stuff, I think really you got to get personal with yourself first too. Because the question that you and I need to start with really isn't God, what are you doing? It should be, God, how come you don't destroy me? How come you don't wipe me off the face of the earth? Because yeah, you and I know, right? God, you know how awful I am. God, you know how I hurt people. You know what I did in the past. You know what I continue to struggle with now. You know me and how messed up I am. God, why not me? You and I have to realize that when we're talking about the end times, when we're talking about our end of this world, we have every reason to be terrified because God should be wiping us out too. Now, a lot of you are like me, except maybe Sam. A lot of you are like me and uh, Tesla, self-driving, freeway, fast speeds. That's eh, not really going to be for you in your future. But how do you feel about something more like this? A coach bus. How do you feel about riding on those things, right? Well, they're not bad. It's this massive, massive thing. And all right, we feel comfortable hopping on this thing. But the challenges are all still there, aren't they? I mean, going on the freeway, 70, 80 miles an hour in one of these things, that's, that's pretty interesting. They speed up the same way. They have to brake, and probably the brakes on a Tesla are going to work a whole lot better than this thing. Because these things are massive, there's just more to get into accidents when you're riding on one of these things. But how do you and I feel about these things? A whole lot better. So what's the difference? What makes us comfortable riding on one of these things and not in the car? Well, when you and I hop on one of these things, what do we know? There's a professional who's in control. There's a professional who's driving and steering and guarding and guiding, so much so that if you're like me, you hop on one of these things, and it doesn't take long, and you can fall asleep. When Jesus tells us about the end, he tells us, it is going to be scary. He tells us that there are awful, terrible things that are happening now and are going to continue to happen all the way until the end. He tells us that the end is near. But here's the cool thing, Christians. The end is near, but he's in control. He's the one who's telling his disciples and us what's going to happen. And how does Jesus end? His description of the end for us. These are unbelievable words. After all of that, after Jesus says, some of you are going to die. He says this. But you, disciples, you believers, not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. This changes things, right? Jesus is in control of all of what's going on. He allows the bad to come, but only up to a point. No, no hair of your head is going to be destroyed and wiped out like that temple was leveled. No, f the end for you and I means the end of wickedness, the end of the awful things in this world. It's not going to last. It gets destroyed. Everything bad we know everything bad we've lived, all the bad things that we've contributed, every doubt about the goodness of God, the end for us is the end of all of that. Because Jesus brought sin to an end when he used some of his last words to say, it is finished. That's the end for us. Jesus is in control so that all of this, when it happens, for us, what does that mean? We get life. A couple months ago, I got to knock off uh, one of the bucket list things that I've had on a bucket list for a long time. It's something that I've been waiting years to be able to do. And finally, my brother-in-law gave me an excuse to do it. I got to go skydiving for the very first time. And yes, I'm doing it again. 
And anybody and everybody that wants to join me on my next time, come. It's going to be fun. But here's the thing that was most surprising to me as I went through this experience. What was crazy for me is just how safe I felt through all of it. There never was this rush of fear that hit me in any of it. When it was my turn uh, to edge up to the door and fall out of a plane from 10,000 feet, I didn't hesitate even for a single moment. And as I was free falling through the air at something like 100, 120 miles an hour, I was at peace with all of it. Why? How? How could any of that be reality for me? Even on my first time, well, because I wasn't alone on any of this. If it were up to me, uh uh, I would have been freaking out. It would have been bad. But it was a tandem skydive because who was attached to my back? Again, a professional. A someone who knew what they were doing, someone who made sure that we were going to get to the ground and it would be safe and fun and peaceful. Brothers and sisters, that is the kind of feeling that Jesus gives us about the end. You and I can live in these awful end times without fear or pressure or anxiety through any of it because we know Jesus has this in his hands. Jesus is the one who's holding us up through all of it, too. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> what should we do when we're in these high-pressure, intense situations, when big leaders who have big power persecute us and attack us and come against us? What should you and I do? Nothing. So you'll bear testimony to me, but make up your mind not to worry beforehand about how you'll defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Jesus tells us, don't even prepare. Don't do anything. I got you. He reminds us in all of this, he's in control. And that means no fear. No fear when you see the people with the signs. No intimidation, no anxiety for you. Because of Jesus, no brokenness inside of you that you'll ever have to experience in a world again. You are someone whose heart is continually and daily being healed. The life that you and I get to live, even now, even in the end, is one at peace. And that, brothers and sisters, is the life that we want other people to see in us. Because, yeah, the end is near, but he's in control. Amen? Amen. Please stand. In response to God's word and what he's done for us, let's confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Those are up on the, the screens in front of us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we're going to take uh, just a moment 
Uh, if you are brand new to our church or if you're watching online and you're new too, take a minute and uh, check out the Connect cards. Check out the online connections that we can do. We'd love to get to know you better. We'd love to have an opportunity to ask you for feedback that you might be able to shape our ministry here. Guests and visitors, please do not feel obligated to give at all towards our ministry. Um, instead, you're our guest and just be welcome for us. Please stand for prayer. Uh, another thing that's kind of new as I get to be the pastor here, uh, one thing that we're going to do during our prayer time is I'll have different uh, petitions, little prayers that we'll do just for different things, things going on in our community, things that are happening throughout our world, lots of different things. Anytime that you have a prayer request, please let me know. You can go online and you can fill in prayer requests that way too. And this will be an opportunity for us to do that as a family of believers and share in that way. But at the end of each little petition that I'll pray for, I'll say the words, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to join in with me after that and say, hear our prayer. Let's all pray. Jesus, you have not only told us about all the difficult things we'll face during these times, but you've also promised to be with us through all of them. Strengthen our confidence in you and in your promises, so that we can face the earthly challenges of the last days with hearts at peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you've provided an amazing blessing for all of us who live in the United States. You've given us a country of freedom, and especially a place where we can worship you without fear. This week, we come to you with thanks for all the people that you've used to provide us with these blessings for all who have served in our military. We ask that you be with them wherever they are. Keep them close to you when they go through challenges. Build them back up and be with them when their time of service comes to an end. Be with their families and support them in every circumstance. And for all who serve and don't know you, use your people to share the good news of Jesus and connect many more with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we ask that you continue to bless our national and local governments with leaders who have wisdom and understanding. Bless all who have been elected to serve this past week and use them to be a blessing for the people that they serve. If it's your will, continue to provide us with a place where we are free to serve you and share the good news of Jesus. And as in all earthly things, remind us that you are in control and you will use all things for your good purposes. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy Spirit, be with us as a church and continue to work through word and sacrament. Strengthen the faith of believers so that they can face the challenges of this world with hearts at peace. Give all of us boldness and opportunities to share your word and your love with the people in our lives so that you might use us to connect more people to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And hear us as we silently bring you some private prayers.
And Lord, hear us also as we join together and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who preserves his church to the end of time when he will come again as king to judge all people and take his own to glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We'll sing our closing song, Forever, another song that reminds us of the confidence we have, even in these weird and awful end times, that God's got it, that we are in Jesus' hands even now. Again, thanks for joining us for worship here at Ascension. Thanks for uh, being gracious for someone who really doesn't know what's going on yet. Uh, I'm looking forward to know you guys because you guys will be able to help me know what's going on here a little bit better. Lots of people to give thanks for as we do for every single worship service. Lots of hands and hours and effort go into what you see in front of you. So for everybody who's involved, big thanks for all of that. Uh, you can see there's lots of announcements that are running up. Uh, coming up December 3rd, 
We're going to have an Advent celebration specifically for the women in our community and in our church. Come and uh, prepare your heart a little bit better for Jesus coming at Christmas. There's so many things that are vying for our attention and uh, things that have to get done before Christmas. This is an opportunity to slow down and focus on the one thing that we need, our Savior who came for us. December 3rd. Uh, coming up, this is next week, right? That's crazy, right? Next week, s'mores and scripture. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve, if you're here in town and you're sticking around, come for this. We'll hang out. We'll have a little bonfire. We'll have a little bit of food. A and just a couple words from God that remind us we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, so that's coming up next Wednesday, November 23rd, 6 p.m. here. Promise it'll be fun. And then the other thing that's going to happen on the 3rd is from 3 to 5 p.m., so right after the Women's Advent Gathering, we'll kind of do our full Christmas decorating here at church where we can make it look like we're getting ready for Christmas. Uh, please come. Uh, I know Nora and Margo are going to be excited to hang ornaments and help pretend to decorate with us a little bit too. We want you to be here and to help out with that too. Everyone's welcome and invited for that. All right, now today, cool stuff going on after this. Uh, a, hang around because there's going to be snacks and treats and coffee. Get to know your brothers and sisters. I know that you're like me, that there are people here whose names you don't know, people that you don't know their life or their story. Be intentional today. Say hi. Introduce yourself. Ask them about them and what they got going on for them. I know I'm going to be doing that a lot this week and next week and for like months after this. It's not awkward to ask people their name after they've told you their name. Do it. It's a good thing. I'm going to be doing it a ton. You guys can do it too. So as we hang out and chat, make sure to do that. Uh, I'd love to get to know you all a lot better too. So coming up, there's going to be a plan just for uh, either hanging out with me, if that's what you want to do. We'd also love as a family for you guys to get to know us a little bit better. If you want to come to our house, if we can come to your house, if we can go out to eat together. Uh, next week, look for a little bit more of a plan for that as we do that. Uh, so that we don't have to do it all together like this, but a little bit more uh, individually. Um, other good stuff today. We'll hang out nice for about 23, half an hour-ish. After that, Sunday school. Awesome teachers who have prepped awesome lessons over in our Sunday school wing. Make sure if you're able, stay for that, hang out for that. Uh, for everybody else, here in the sanctuary, probably at about 10.30-ish, we're going to get started with a new Bible study series called Let's Go. Ascension is a mission church. We are a church that is looking to get connected to our community and to connect our community to Jesus. So how do we do that? Yes, you have a full-time pastor, and I love doing that, and that's what I'm going to be all about. But let's be real. It's not me. It's us. So how do you do that? Do you feel a little bit unequipped? Does that make you feel a little bit uneasy talking to people about Jesus? This Bible study is going to be one step towards equipping you to do that. And it's real simple. You love people, you listen to people, and you lead them to Jesus. But as you're able, 1030-ish today in the sanctuary, we'll kick off that new um, Bible study series that's going to run for a while. I promise it'll be worth it. I promise it'll be fun too. And then lastly, another thing that's kind of been on pause for a little while are the life groups here at Ascension. I've heard from a bunch of different people Hey, I love life groups. When are they starting up again? What's going on? Uh, coming up next week, we're going to have a plan laid out for when that is happening. If you don't know what life groups are, they are small group gatherings that don't happen here, but in people's houses. You eat food together. You get to know people better. You lift one another up. You help people who need help, and you pray for each other. And you dig into my sermon a little bit more. Or if you want, you can pick apart my sermon a little bit more and bring questions later on, too. Uh, next week, look for a plan for those. If you're not connected with one of those, uh, try it out. I promise again, it'll be worth it. All right, other things that I'm missing. I'm talking a ton for announcements. All right, Mike's giving me the thumbs up, so uh, that is my cue. That's good. We're all good to go. Feel free to hang out in here if you want to hang out in here. Snacks and treats and back. God bless your weeks as you live for him.